Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I really hope that you're all well. I'm coming at you today with a spoiler-free review of A Court of Solar Flames by Sarah J Maas. If you have watched my early videos on this channel from last year, you will know I am trash with Sarah J Maas. I love everything that she does, so um, this is obviously not going to be like a negative review. I really, really do love Sarah J Maas, so I'm just getting out there really early, okay? I, I enjoyed it. So to begin with I'm going to tell you about my kind of like rating for this book and why I rated it slightly lower than I would normally rate Sarah J Maas books and then I will get on to kind of the review portion. I'm trying to formulate my thoughts on this book still to be honest and I'm struggling I'm not going to lie to you but I've been in a little bit of a reading slump and just a real like just general slump this past couple of months so I am kind of like struggling to formulate thoughts and coherently explain why I feel the way I feel about books and things um but anyway I gave this book four out of five stars which is slightly unusual for me because I do tend to rate Sarah J Maas stories five out of five stars ordinarily um but there is a reason why I rated this four out of five stars and it is similar to the reason why I rated Tower of Dawn four out of five stars the first time I read it and that is because this book follows Nesta and I don't like Nesta and I can't get emotionally attached to Nesta same way that I don't like Kale in the Throne of Glass series at all so when it came to reading Tower of Dawn while I objectively liked the story and liked the writing and I liked kind of everything about it I just didn't like Kale so I found it really really difficult to emotionally engage with the book and therefore it just wasn't a five star read for me that said I've then subsequently reread re it I think twice and really loved it both of those times and actually got the five star reading experience from it so I do think that when it comes to rereading this because inevitably I will reread it I I think I will probably enjoy it a lot more um, the other thing I need to say is I was in a massive reading slump when this arrived and I wasn't really in the mood to read fantasy but at the same time I didn't want to risk any spoilers by leaving it and not reading it when it first came out so that also will have had an implication on my reading experience 100% why am I not in focus there we go um, so that's just kind of like my reasoning for not giving it a five out of five stars I did really love the writing, I did really love the story, I did really love the direction this takes the whole series in for future novels. Um, for me it is just that I don't have that emotional connection to Nesta. If it was a book about Elaine would I have felt differently? Probably. Um, and obviously the weird thing with that is when um, she released uh, House of Earth and Blood last year and I immediately loved it even though obviously I had no emotional connection to those characters but I think because it was something so new it was just that little bit different whereas this I just I don't know I just found it harder to kind of really emotionally connect that said I did enjoy it reasons why I enjoyed it well firstly because Nesta is a bit of a badass as much as I don't like her she she's pretty formidable and I do love like a um like a strong take no bullshit kind of like female lead and I did enjoy that about her in comparison to say for example Feyre in A Court of Thorns and Roses where she's kind of a bit of a weaker character and obviously she does have that incredible character arc through the first three books but I feel like for Nesta she's so strong anyway so I did really like that kind of like no bullshit um kind of vibe from her the whole way through um I also really like the way that this deals with trauma um obviously this does follow the events in A Court of Wings and Ruin and A Court of Rust and Starlight where Nesta is really suffering so I did find it very very interesting and powerful the exploration that trauma obviously has on a person's ability to cope, a person's ability to process, a person's ability to heal. Um, so I did it, I did really like that representation in this and I thought Sarah did it really great justice to be honest um, and I also loved the fact that she was able to then bring in the conversation wider about women's issues by kind of um, bringing in more female characters that have also suffered some level of trauma. I'm trying really hard like not to give any spoilers at all here so um, that's why I'm being a little bit vague. But I did find that really powerful and when obviously bringing in kind of like the training elements and using um, like self-defense and physical fitness and stuff as a way to kind of heal and grow I enjoyed that and I found it really powerful and I like the fact that that didn't centre solely on Nesta that centred on a wide variety of female characters and I thought that was really really great um, as someone who has suffered mentally and has got trauma from various things that have happened in my past 
I can obviously relate to that on a level and yeah I, I enjoyed that representation I thought it was done really well and I thought she handled it with respect as well rather than kind of um just using it as a plot device and not really doing it justice so I really really liked that I also really liked that the setting in this was slightly different because while obviously it did center around the night court it wasn't like in the night court obviously everything that happened especially kind of in a court of um wings and ruin and latterly in a court of mist and fury there was a lot of like court-based politics and a lot of stuff that kind of happens um directly within like the inner circle and i really like the fact that this was just kind of set apart from that so you still you still got snippets of that and you still knew what was going on within like the wider kind of group of characters but ultimately the main protagonists were kind of in their own little space and I, I liked I liked that a lot and I like the fact that we then got to learn more about things like how the House of Wind works um, and I really liked that there was just kind of that little bit more um, discussion on the Illyrian warriors and the war camps and all of that kind of jazz. I, I don't know, it was nice to just see like a whole other setting rather than it just being kind of like in the courts or under the mountain or war you know it was it was nice to just see a little bit more and experience a little bit more of Prithian in general so I did like the kind of snippets of um foreshadowing as well with other characters that has obviously opened up the potential for more books I think she's already announced that there's going to be more books but I can't remember how many she said I personally from reading it I feel like it's definitely been opened up for two and I'd be surprised if there wasn't two I feel like it's opened up for one about Elaine and potentially one from more as well um so I'm, I'm, I'm excited for that and I definitely have more of an emotional connection to Elaine as well so I'd be really keen to kind of see how her character arc happens in the future. But yeah, I really like how the events of this have obviously kind of like opened it up for like another, another book I feel similar to A Court of Silver Flames in regards to the events. And then I feel like a third book which will ultimately have some kind of battle or some kind of um, big resolution to the current problem. Again, trying my hardest not to give spoilers, so I'm gonna have to be super vague when I say that. Um, but yeah, I I really like the how like it's opened itself up for a lot more, and I feel like it's a bit same but different in terms of the threats are kind of the same as in the first three books, but just kind of the format of them is so different. Again, trying my hardest not to be vague. Um, yeah. Oh god, this is so difficult to not give spoilers. Why did I decide to do a spoiler-free review? I'm having so many regrets right now. Uh, I really liked Nesta's character arc in this. After going on about how much I don't like her as a character, I did really like seeing that kind of progression and that kind of healing process and the way that she ultimately turns her experiences into almost like a positive that encourages her to like fight for something rather than being swallowed by the experiences i thought that was pretty powerful and her kind of decision at the end again not giving spoilers nearly got me emotional nearly got me emotional i um yeah i mean that whole kind of like ending in general that that did tug at my heartstrings a little bit because obviously if you've read it you will know if you've not read it you will find out it's yeah it's a lot um and this is so difficult why did i decide to do a spoiler free review anyway yeah i really like the writing the whole way through i loved the smut can we just say it was very smutty and i'm here for it um and my other thing that i kind of really enjoyed as well was the constant mention of smutty romance i just loved the fact that that was like dropped in and the fact that all of these female characters discovered this love for smutty romance novels because like i am here for smutty romance novels you guys i love them and i was like i see myself in this book in so many ways and i love it um so that definitely got me happy for sure so yeah i feel like i have done this video really badly I'll be honest, I do not feel like this is my best review video, but I kind of don't really know what else to say other than I did really enjoy it, ultimately I did. The writing was good, the character development I really enjoyed, I thought it definitely gave us like a deeper um, 
kind of perspective on not just Nesta either but also like it touched on giving Elaine that little bit more depth and Lucian that little bit more depth as well and I kind of can't wait to see how those characters get to develop more over the coming books. I think they're going to have kind of much bigger parts to play and I think that we'll see people like Feyre and Rhysand kind of fade to the back a little bit which does make me sad because ultimately like I am trash for Rhysand but I think it's a good thing because it is interesting to learn more about the rest of those characters that we've come to kind of like know and love over the past uh, three and a half books and now obviously with this one too. Um, so ultimately I did enjoy it. That rating of four out of five will probably change to a five star ultimately when I read it again. Um, I think my kind of like mood and also the fact that it was about Nesta with the two things that definitely had an implication on my own enjoyment but I don't think that that is reflective on the novel as a whole because I think the story was good, it was engaging, it was fast paced, I enjoyed it a lot. There was elements that made me laugh, there was elements that made me sad, there was exciting elements um, and like I say it definitely opened up for a really 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 interesting um, kind of like story development over the next few books. So I'm excited to see where she goes with this. I'm, I am invested, of course I'm invested, but um, yeah, I'm excited to see where it goes. I really hope this video has been okay. I'm so out of practice doing reviews, so it probably isn't my best. Um, but yeah, let me know in the comments if you've read this book. Let me know what you thought of it, if you agreed with anything that I've said or if you disagreed or whatever, let me know. I'd be really interested to have a chat with you in a little bit more depth about it. And just to say as well on that, please do, if you if you do kind of post in the comments, please do keep it spoiler free because obviously the video is a spoiler free review. And I will see you again in another video very soon. Don't forget to subscribe. Bye.